Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about adaptations. Now adaptations are one of the most exciting things about OER and they really demonstrate the power of using open licenses when you're creating content and sharing it with the world. What adaptations allow is the freedom for people to have the exact content that they need without needing to start from scratch. And that can range from making big changes to lots of resources that they bring together, right through to just making a few small tweaks to make it work exactly for their context. Adaptations just mean making changes to an existing resource, and there's a world of possibility out there of what it can look like. A few of the examples that uh, you might come across are people adapting content to localize it, uh, so moving between jurisdictions, countries, with their examples and statistics. Uh, you can also count translation as an adaptation. Uh, some people may create a new format, go from a text to an audiobook or something like that. Um, some people might move content between subjects, so find uh, you know, research methods that, methods that are relevant across different subjects. They may be taking from a bunch of different resources and bringing them together into one piece. Uh, there are all sorts of different ways that you can think about adaptations, and there are always new possibilities and examples coming up. Now, even when you're creating content from scratch, you can be thinking about adaptations. Spending a little bit of time setting yourself up at the beginning makes it easier for people to be using your content down the line. A few ways you can go about doing this is to make sure that you're choosing a permissive license. Licenses are always context specific and you need to choose what works for you, but the more permissive you can be with the license, the more possibilities there are down the line. Make sure that you have editable formats available of your text. While students may be accessing uh, something like a PDF or, or a web version, having dedicated editable formats means that adapters have a much easier job. When you're structuring your content, you can make sure that you're taking a modular approach. Uh, a few ways you can do that is to, for example, have a standard formula or template for each chapter. Um, you can make sure that any examples or case studies that you're using that are very context specific are clearly delineated in the structure. That makes them easier to swap in and out with local examples. And you can also refer to other units or chapters in the book by name and not number, which means that people can then take them out of order and move them around if they so choose. We also recommend that you keep a running list in the back matter uh, of things that might be relevant to adapters, so any specific permissions, anywhere where the, there is content whose license differs from the global license. So for example, if you have a uh, CC by NC image in a chapter, making sure that that's clear so people know that they can either swap it out or, or understand the, the license differs. And you can also there include your preferred information for attribution. So while there are standard formulas, you may choose to have a custom text that you ask people to use when they're adapting your text. If you're on the other side of the equation and you're adapting an existing text, uh, there are a few things that you can keep in mind as well. First of all, check if there are any other versions that fit your needs around. Uh, it might not be immediately clear when you come across a resource that other people have already done the work to adapt it, so spend a little bit of time checking around uh, to see if, if you can maybe save yourself a bit of work. Next, make sure you're checking the license of all of the elements within the book. It may be that the global license is very permissive, but there are pieces within it that are more restrictively licensed or even perhaps only have one-time permissions granted. Uh, it's important to make sure that you're aware of that so that when you're creating your text, you understand everything that's in, within it. In addition, on licenses, make sure that you are thinking about what license you're able to put on your derivative work, on your adaptation. Uh, the way that different licenses interplay with each other uh, can be a little complex, but there are some great charts available to show you how they interact so that you're sure that whatever license you're putting your on, on your adaptation fits with the original license of the work you began with. We also recommend that you spend some time making it clear what the differences are between your version and the original. This you should be doing for yourself anyway, so that you know what your purpose is in creating a new version. Uh, but you can take it a step further and actually put that into the text so anybody coming across both versions understands uh, how and why your version is different. And to add to that too, you need to be linking back and forth between those versions as much as you can. We recommend the same to creators, so that people coming across different versions understand how they relate to each other. 
And finally, when you're making an adaptation, this can be a team effort too, as with all of the projects that we uh, talk about at Rebus. It's about building a community, getting really great investment from lots of people who will find it useful. So take the time to approach this as a new creation project. Creation doesn't only mean from scratch. You're putting in a lot of time and effort to create something valuable, and you can be doing that with a great community of people around you. Overall, there's a huge amount of opportunity with OER to create adaptations. It's a really exciting part of what we do. And if both creators and adapters take a little bit of time to think about those uses, we can make the content stronger for everybody. It's really about keeping all of your audiences in mind, not just your readers, but also adapters and people who are going to be working with your content over time. By doing this, what we can create is a really thriving ecosystem of content that's evolving and adapting and changing and meeting everybody's needs uh, all around the world.